So, I'm going to be talking about the Nero Katome Boy, aka the Turkana Boy, aka KNMWT15000. Going to be uh, looking at how uh, he will evolve, his anatomy, his growth, and really this is an adventure in childhood mortality because he did die very, very young. First, it's important to uh, note how he was actually discovered. He was found at Nari Katome 3, a site along Lake Turkana in Kenya by a man named Kimoa Kimoi. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but he was, um, he was a worker under Richard Leakey, and one day out on a walk he spotted this uh, piece of a skull, which later turned out to be um, part of this fantastically preserved skeleton that you see on your right here. It was dated to 1.53 million years by using uh, radiometric dating as the um, decay of uh, these radioacid, radioactive, uh, radioactive uh, elements, but also his contextual placement because he's very uh, nicely sandwiched between these uh, two layers of volcanic ash that would have fallen before and after he died. Um, um, speaking of death, um, we're going to be looking at how he, uh, how he actually died, and I know this is a strange place to, um, start, but it also, it actually helps us look at how he would have lived. Now, there are a lot of theories for why exactly he died, um, some of them include, or most of them, in fact, include, uh, disorders uh, such as scoliosis and spina bifida. These come from interpretations of uh, the lower back uh, vertebrae a, um, claiming that uh, they're small or they're distorted, but um, there are more recent studies saying that this is not true. Um, it could have just been a uh, feature that was later selected against, and um, scoliosis especially, that's the big claim, except there's no um, significant difference in uh, how his rib cage is actually shaped or sized, which is a common feature of those with scoliosis. Uh, also, there's this claim that he would have died from a uh, tooth infection. In fact, this is seen by damage to the right side of his jaw, and uh, this really would have been a uh, common cause of death all the way from Nario Katome's time up to um, before the modern invention of antibiotics. So I think this is a much more likely reason for his death. Um, and it's also likely he would have died or actually been placed somewhere um, where flowing water ran into Lake Turkana. Um, somebody expo um, disposing of his body or else he died where um, this would have washed him down to the lake. We see his bones are very scattered, um, showing that they would have, uh, have been separated by um, flowing down this river. But he's also very um, fragmentary. The picture you're seeing on your right is very much mediated by super glue. In fact, um, Richard Leakey suggests that he might have actually been crushed um, post-mortem by uh, some kind of large animal, and that's why his bones are so shattered. Um, looking at his anatomy, especially his skull, we see he has very small molars compared to uh, species that come before him. This isn't falling with molars that we found of other Homo erectus. But he's also got very tiny temporal fossa, meaning that the muscles that would have attached at these points would have been very small, not very good at chewing. So he would have had to likely um, been processing these foods somehow outside of his body. And that's where tools come in. Though Nario Kitome himself wasn't found with tools, um, we know that uh, those of his species were actually found with these Ashleyan tools. They were making these tools that could have been used to process these foods, help them eat uh, things that they wouldn't have been able to break up with their teeth. Um, but he's also got modern body proportions, which is interesting, going all the way back to 1.53 million years old, meaning that the uh, length of his arms and legs are actually uh, with the same ratio that we see in uh, humans today. He's also very tall and lanky, 
which isn't really surprising considering the savannah environment in which he would have lived as in following with Allen's rule saying that he would have um, exposed more of his body surface area to the environment dumping more of that heat out as opposed to something that's living in a cold environment which would have uh, wanted to trap all that body heat in exposing less of its surface area to the environment. Um, now back to the vertebrae actually now, um, normally it's uh, narrow Katome is described as having six lumbar vertebrae but that's really weird because that's actually a australopithecus like feature um, we would expecting in genus homo for it to become more human like um, and of course it may very bit well be wrong there was actually a paper that came out um, in 2010 that suggests the one of the uh, lumbar vertebrae was misinterpreted the six most uh, pre-sacral vertebrae the sixth up from the sacrum is actually a thoracic uh, vertebrae he, because it seems to have a notch for a rib there and this means that he would have had the same number of vertebrae as modern humans allowing for the same sort of lumbar lordosis that we get in humans this kind of s-shape bending of the spine at uh, and around the sacrum, um, this really redistributes the uh, center of gravity, allowing him to stand upright, walk, run much easier, much more like a human, much more biomechanically efficiently. Um, now, we don't especially know what the uh, biomechanical function of um, six vertebrae is. Um, but we know if uh, these four lumbar vertebrae, um, like we see in gorillas today, results in a much uh, shorter, stiffer back. So here with uh, Homo erectus, we seem to have this nice transitional uh, piece between Australopithecus and uh, chimpanzee. Also, on his age and size, so he was very, very much uh, coupled with one another because he died rather tall. And it's important to know um, how he would have grown and where he was aged because um, he he could have been aging actually like a human or more like a chimp. Humans uh, have this sort of growth spurt that we go through, everybody experiences around the time of puberty and chimpanzees don't have this so if he would have all if he would have experienced a growth spurt um, sometime after his death he would have grown much much taller than expected or if he wouldn't have had a growth spurt it's very likely that the height he died at is the height that um, he would have been for the rest of his life had he survived um, so, did he, um, would he would have grown to six foot one if he had that growth spurt, or would he have stayed at five foot one? Um, we can, for aging, aging again, I said these are very much coupled, um, we can look at his, um, bone maturity and his teeth. Now, the bones that, uh, Richard Leakey has looked at, he's uh, said that it's aged at 11 to 12 years old, um, but interpretations of the teeth wear and uh, how his molars were erupting suggest that he was only actually eight years old. Um, Richard Leakey further claims that uh, this interpretation of the teeth also uh, often leaves um, younger ages than he actually is at. But we can form a growth chart that's kind of transitional between a human and a, um, and a chimp. Uh, suggesting that um, at the age of death um, he would have already have experienced a uh, small small and short-lived growth spurt but, um, like sort of like a human actually um, this is interesting because it is like we should expect from a species at this time sort of transitional um, so if he had already experienced this growth spurt, which is likely um, with the age of approximately 12, he would have only maybe grown another inch before his death. So to wrap up, um, yes, he is very fragmentary, but he's very much complete. And he is uh, 
a great look at how these things would have grown um, given his younger age. Now we need to look more into this, but it, it's likely that he is a great transitional piece. And um, it's great to look at him in his completeness for these anatomical changes, like I said, with the molars and the teeth that would have been happening over time.